Hi, Colleen Schmidt here from Divination Counseling Service presenting today the new moon of August 8th, 2021. So we're looking at a conjunction of the sun and moon at around 16 degrees plus in Leo. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at first in the Janus program, just some of the basic aspects. One of the, well, there's several that are really big, like the sun and moon. Not only do they square Saturn, but they also square Uranus and they make an opposition to Jupiter. So we're going to start with that. But before I begin all the exciting stuff, I just want to say thank you for watching the video. Thank you to all my subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber, I hope that you'll think about becoming one. And if you would like, comment, I'd love to hear from you. In any event, uh, let's check out what this chart says. So I'm going to be using Washington, D.C. once again for this chart, but I'm going to try to go through the chart in such a way that it affects everybody. I will talk a little bit about D.C., uh, particularly when I get to the asteroid angles, but I really want to concentrate on the fact that this particular sun and moon are really aspected by Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter. And I really want to take a look at that because it doesn't matter where you live. They may fall in separate different houses, depending on what part of the world you're looking at, but you're still going to have those aspects. So I want to start by looking at just the planetary aspects of this particular new moon. So let's have a look. So I'm back, you can tell. Basically what I really want to look at is I want to look at how the sun and the moon at 16 degrees of Leo are affected. And you can see all of the aspects when I do that. All the aspects tend to show up in the corner. So I'm looking at both the sun and the moon and you can see from what I'm doing that they are uh, both in conjunction of Mercury. They are in both in opposition to Saturn and in opposition, although it's extremely wide, and so, you know, of that uh, Jupiter. So I'm not going to spend as much time on that. This, this is still a wide orb. It's still seven degrees, but it really is rather important. And then finally, we're going to look at the square of both of these to Uranus, which as we can see mathematically, this is a really tight square. You can see from my math up here that it's only one minute, 30, one degree, 30 minutes of separation between them. So I want to start there. And we always know that Uranus represents our kind of want to break away from things, to break away, to do things differently to make our lives a little bit more exciting, to create more freedom. And in one of those things, it would be freedom of expression. So I'm going to grab my pen, which only takes a moment. And I just want to start by kind of really dissecting these. So Uranus is something that is really has a lot of aspects, you know, just like the sun and the moon, they're, this is not even midpoints. This is just, this is how many aspects they have on them. And Uranus, if we could see this, uh, can't see it now because I've changed, but Uranus at 14 degrees of Taurus is also then deeply squaring the Saturn, our restrictions, our lessons. We do call him the taskmaster. And then really close square here to the 16 degrees, 14 minutes of Leo. So, which again, five here. So look at that. Okay. So we have, or yeah, seven here. I'm, I apologize for that. But here we have this kind of unusual configuration. We already know that that Saturn Uranus square is causing a lot of anxiety with people. It's really kind of revving our engines. Uh, in some ways that can be nerve wracking. And I think that's a really good way to put it. But when you throw the sun and the moon in the mix, it's kind of pointing out to the fact that 
you know, maybe what we're striving for, maybe what our goals are, could be in direct conflict with restrictions, responsibilities, obligations. And that could definitely seep in over the next month. Uranus, uh, and it's basically a T-square, okay? So this is a T-square. I guess we can figure that out pretty well. And T-squares really make things happen. So we want to hope that this energy is being used to, in, a, in a beneficial way. Uh, but realize that Uranus makes us want to do things differently. We want to live our days differently. We might want to interact with different people than what we're used to. We want to break up the monotony. We want to break up the daily routine. We want to uh, create a, a more freedom, I guess would be a good way to put it. The Saturn is telling us that we still have obligations. We have restrictions as a result of our obligations and our responsibilities. And so there is this whole thing of almost feeling depressed, if you will, because of the anxiety of Uranus bumping up against the restrictions of Saturn. So we have this kind of conflict going on. Some people, not everybody, but some people will probably take this as an opportunity to really do things differently. And in some cases, they could be very successful because this also creates a lot of energy where you either don't do anything with the energy and then it comes back on you or you take advantage and utilize that energy because as much as we're bogged down with our responsibilities with this, you can also be productive. You can get things done uh, with this, though. Um, and I'm going to point to this in a minute. Uh, Jupiter is a bit of a factor um, with this whole game. And I actually am really going to talk about Jupiter with Mercury. But Jupiter is um, one of those things that tends to make us overdo it. And we don't want to overdo it. We don't want to overthink it, as the case may be here with that opposition. OK, now everything that comes with Jupiter is usually very pleasant. However, the tendency comes when we begin to take it too easy, we get a little lazy or when we overindulge on any level. OK, so you really want to look at this, this whole aspect here of and I actually have notes. So I'm back. And I did clean up my board a little bit. I have a lot of notes, particularly on the sun opposite of uh, the uh, sun opposite, uh, excuse me, sun opposite Saturn. There we go. So we have uh, some notes and it's basically talking about how we could be a little bit lonely. We could feel isolated with this energy. There's um, a real conflict here between our need to self-express to show our emotions, to be able to be ourselves. And then that conflict comes in where we have restrictions, obligations, and responsibilities. There's a real need to find balance in our lives when we go through this transit. So for the whole month, we're going to have moments of feeling isolated, maybe even a little depressed due to our restrictions, or because um, of not being able to, re to, to really be ourselves, even in our relationships with those that are close to us. So there's this real kind of isolated feeling with this. But it really is also good because it allows us to be very honest with the people in our lives. But it does say that despite the fact that, you know, there may be some pressures and some responsibilities that rest on our shoulders with the sun and the moons, in opposition to Saturn, there's also this uh, sense of just kind of having low energy. So for the next month, when they say the dog days of summer, they're not kidding. So I do anticipate that particularly those of us on the east, upper northeast, we're going to start experiencing another heat wave, ironically, right as this new moon comes in. And it's not a surprise because it just goes back to the whole dog days of summer type thing and how 
our energy levels will be low anyway. Okay, so then you get into the next one, which is this, this need for freedom. Okay, which is this one. All right. Now, remember, this is a T-square. We're really kind of generating some energy. And I do believe that as a result of this new moon, a lot of people will be beginning new projects. OK, and if you're one of the people during this month of August that is beginning a new project, and it doesn't just have to be a project that requires a great deal of energy. So I wouldn't go out and change my rooms around in my house. Thankfully, I've already done that. But I myself have started some new uh, projects related to my work as an astrologer. Well, it is good for concentration. So that would be one way to utilize this energy. OK, so with Uranus here and we know of this anxiety. OK, we've spoken about that. I spoke about it the last time I drew up the T-square. That anxiety, it's also asking us to look at our structures. It's saying, look at what's going on in your daily life. And does that fit who you are today or who you want to be in the future? And it's asking us to perhaps look at those structures, Saturn, and find where we need to perhaps make changes you're honest, where we need to invest either more time, more money into, okay, uh, whatever that is, that new project or that new direction or that. And yeah, there's going to be anxiety because whenever there's change, it brings on anxiety. But remember that Uranus is our friends. So one of the things we might be doing is really getting to know different people. I know I've talked about that in some of the daily astrology and those different people will bring some excitement into your life, whether it stays or it doesn't. For the time being, it's a great distraction. And that's how I look at things like that. And there's a growth as a result. But Uranus is also about our freedom on a personal level. And right now with this connection right here, we don't feel a lot of freedom. We feel a lot of isolation and restriction. So there is Right there is the dynamic, uh, the dynamics of this T-square. Now, Uranus is in a perfect, beautiful trine to Venus. And I think that it is allowing us to, uh, and I even talked about that, and I believe that was um, on another paper, but it was really referring to the fact that um, when you're dealing with Venus, you are dealing with perhaps, you know, wanting to be with different people. All right. Maybe today is not the great day to spend or this month might not be a great time to spend all your time with your spouse or your significant other. But maybe hang with the girls, hang with the guys, whatever. It won't be long lasting. It won't necessarily be stable, but it would be very exciting and a lot of fun. So, you know, that's a way to use the energy. So we want to we want to find ways to use our energy in all of this. Now, the um, other things that I did want to talk about is this opposition. OK, so it'll be up oh, and they pulled it right up. The opposition of uh, I got to keep it on my pen just so I don't pull up things of Venus to Neptune. And let me just talk to you about that for just a second. That's not something I put in the daily angles, though it won't last long. OK, but it, it, it is very prominent in the new moon. OK, because we're talking 20 degrees to 22 degrees. So it's close. And one of the things that it's referring to, and actually it's under two degrees, is the fact that disappointments. So we could have disappointments with money, with loved ones. Like I said, maybe not the best time to spend with a significant other. OK, there. But I, this could even be in romance in general. There could be some disappointments. 
Okay, with that. But you know what I also see here because of it's an opposition is that there could be a clarity. So throughout the month, you might go through sort of a roller coaster effect that when you find some things out, you get a little bit disappointed. But the reality is, is that it's a really good thing that you found out. So you could work on it together, maybe. Okay. Um, Neptune is not just about uh, disappointments and disillusions that are brought into us through other people, though, uh, because it is in aspect to the DC chart, that could hold true for people in the DC area. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But what I'm thinking of here is really the, uh, the connection of um, the descendant, which is almost like the truth is coming out. So there is a clarity on this. Now, when I get there, we're going to find out, and I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but I am going to talk about this when we get there. There is a Lee on the uh, sun and moon. Now, the sun and the moon are only literally minutes outside of the Aries point, and I am going to talk about that later. Lee is there, and Lee um, is referring to... Uh, information we're getting on the web and it's going to once again question the idea of disinformation and information that we might be deluding ourselves with but it really might not be real okay and that is really interesting in all of this and um and it really is i think i believe it or not i believe yeah it is it's only eight minutes outside of so it's literally only six minutes from the sun and the moon and there's something um regarding that uh, so look to the websites internets and that's where we might because also in there at the opposing end down here um is uh actually not even opposing i think it's in square if there she is yes it is a square is poseidon now poseidon is 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 eight minutes outside of the aries point as well isn't that funny we formed a midpoint between this is what i really wanted to talk about lee and poseidon and they form at the aries point if you will and it is telling us that we do need to be very, very mindful where we're getting our information. And we need to be mindful that we're not disillusioning ourselves, that we're not disappointing ourselves. Because one of the things you got to look for with this uh, concept between Venus and Neptune is what are our expectations? And are the expectations practical? Are they real? So there's a couple of things to look for in that right there that I that was a, a huge area I wanted to talk about now just some minor things you're going to find out that um, this node these nodes are in the Aries point as well they're um, they're within the degree okay they're within by seven minutes and the Adamitis is not in the Aries point, it's just running with the node, but I am going to point out that in the DC chart, it is on the midheaven, one of the asteroids, Adamitis. So there's like actually three different places that we look for that. Now, what this is meaning is, is that on some level, you're con compacting, consolidating, compressing, and maybe even dealing with fewer people as a result of this. It also means that there could be delays and obstacles with regards to our, to our uh, connections, the people that we're getting together with. The, um, the other thing that I want to talk about is how the South Node in the DC chart is in the third house. And, you know, that kind of oppresses your thinking. So, it, and it also means that maybe some of the people that we're hearing from in DC were not, they're, they're not, their ideas are not well thought out or they're, they're oppressed in their communication. So that also brings on depression. Now, I really want to talk about this depression because I believe in August, a lot of us will have 
days or moments of it. I don't think that it's, unless you're somebody who's prone to mental health, I don't think it's going to last the whole month, but I do feel like it's an issue. And I feel like that because whenever you're dealing with the sun and the moon in opposition of Saturn, that's a factor. Then you've got that anxiety of Uranus, which is actually squaring both of the above. Okay. So we got anxiety, we got a little bit of depression, and then we have oppressed thinking. So I think that one of the things that I want to leave you with is the fact that we do have um, an out of sign opposition from Mars to Jupiter, which is actually not too bad, believe it or not. And it can make it a little bit more pleasant. And then we've got Venus, which is actually an aspect to this ascendant. But in Venus, we do feel that, you know, there's compliments and there's kindness and all of these things really help. So one of the things that I want people to think about is being kind and compassionate to other people. And that I heard today on TV, and I thought it was really wonderful, that somebody said that they had heard that when you're feeling really bad and down and depressed, that one of the best things you can do is help somebody else. Well, ironically, that's in this chart. And that's what I see here with this aspect. So I do believe that this is um, a moment for us. I hate to say it this way, but for us to grow up, to deal with reality, to understand that some of us have disillusioned ourselves. So there's a lot of self-deception that plays out in the next month. And just really quickly looking at uh, Mercury and this is where I want to go back to the pen because every time I click on my page, I get aspects. So I really do want to look at this 23 degrees of Leo Mercury, really an important point. And um, actually, it's an important part of my chart, which is wonderful. Um, but I, I, I love a couple of things here. I love that it's in conjunct Pluto. And that that Pluto, that it, by token, if you're in this DC area, it also in conjuncts the midheaven. But I also wanted to look at this really strong in conjunct from the Mercury to the Neptune. And I'm going to tell you straight up that in conjuncts can feel uncomfortable. And Mercury and Neptune, that is the lying. That is the deception. That is being deceived whether it's to yourself or somebody else it's like so direct okay and you know the fact that it does some come so close to the sun and the moon and the fact that it's in the 11th house or the house of others would really would really i think be an exceptional point to look at with regards to getting to the truth and not just accepting something because we heard it on the internet or we heard it from somebody around us okay mercury um in leo is uh also in opposition to jupiter which means that be wary of those who talk too much because mercury and jupiter is like excessive thinking excessive talking i expect that one of the reasons that people are depressed is they're thinking too much I think that they're thinking too much about subject matters that are not necessarily always going to be beneficial. Just my thoughts. So here are some ways, you know, these are some of the things that we want to look at with this chart. Um, I'm going to come back to this, not to this Janus, but I'm going to actually look at these aspects in solar fire. So let's jump to that next. So I'm back. There's always so much of this stuff that pops up in the software. So I'm, I'm looking at a, a fuller chart, obviously. This is a number of the asteroids that I normally work with. And I really just wanted to do a DC thing for just a few minutes, okay? Because I want us to understand how to work with asteroids. So I'm going to be looking at the asteroids in both the Sun axis, the Aries axis, and we're going to just do a quick number here on the angles. I want to talk about uh, a couple of things with this chart. Not that this program is as delicate or sensitive, but I, I want to put my pen on. Here we have, this asteroid is called 
Atlantis. And it represents things like um, gloom and doom or a sense or a feeling of gloom and doom. So think about what I just said about depression and oppressed thinking from that chart. And then add in, if you're in the DC area, that pessimism from the gloom and doom of the Atlantis. Okay. So I can see where a lot of people will be pessimistic. Not that we don't have uh, a lot to be pessimistic about at the moment, but there is a lot of pessimism. But the other thing that Atlantis represents is an invasion of privacy or being concerned about our invasion of privacy, which I really concerned me when Lee, which is a website or web stuff, shows up with the sun and the moon, and then we have an invasion of privacy on the ascendant at 26 degrees of Virgo. So cross our fingers that we don't have some kind of huge hack. Um, I do feel like we are going to be surprised uh, by things that are going on this month. And remember that Neptune, though it's all the way down here in this chart, is still an aspect to that descendant. So I feel like we are going to be maybe finding out uh, secrets. We might be finding out things that we did not know. And some of the things that we find out could be surprising. We're also going to be surprised at how slow something goes, okay, because of Apollo being there. And one of the reasons why things could go slowly is because there could be crisis after crisis after crisis. Well, it's sort of happening. And it makes things go slower. And it's a reminder how much we need to uh, strategize. We need to plan we need to have strategies. And I, I do believe that's what it's talking about. But I want to point out something here. This asteroid, which is, by the way, in effect on the ascendant, and this asteroid, which is in effect on the descendant, is also two political asteroids. So politics is huge in the DC chart, which is one of the reasons why I showed it. Okay? Pallas... And the counterpart here, which is Minerva, are about stranding, st strategy and planning, but they're also about people pleasing, people saying things to please somebody else, people saying things just to please other people. Be aware of that. I can already see that happening. Okay. So be aware that politics in the Washington, D.C. chart is huge. I don't think anyone's too surprised by that, though. So, and, and I'm going to say this. It also is about partisan politics because of Cupido, which is like the club, okay, is involved. So you've got a T-square on this, and this is in Paran. So this, is, this has to do with angles. Now, two degrees of cap. Uh, uh, yeah. See, especially with these Pisces, you might not see it. It is an out of sign. Here we do have a direct square. Okay. So here we have all this stuff coming down. T-square again on Cupido, which I think is just emphasizing partisan politics, which I think doesn't do anybody any good during a pandemic. I wish these grown-ups would really be grown-ups. I wish that people would just grow up. But unfortunately, I think we're learning a lot from the universe while all this is going on, and that's why we're going through it. So that's the only answer I have. I can tell you that it's all causing chaos, and it's restricting, limiting, and delaying us. And I think that that is something that really is important here. Okay. I did mention that Adamit, which is right there, works like Adamitas. So it is talking again about delays and obstacles. It's talking about restrictions and restrictions within families, restrictions within communities, restrictions within groups comes into play here. Okay. So I, I really wanted to, and it's the idea of taking care of ourselves. It also highlights 
the food business. And it always does, you know, because when the numbers get bad, people stop going out to eat. Okay. And that affects a whole business. So it, it really is about trying to get our lives back, but being at this place where we don't seem to be able to do that, we have to learn to get out of our own way. There's that sun opposite Saturn. We also have to learn to um, really not delude ourselves. Here we go, right there. Not to delude ourselves, okay? And to really pay attention if you will, to the ways in which we're changing, not just as a group, but internally as well. Okay. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing the DC chart. I just wanted to state some of the more obvious factors of this chart. So at this point, we can go right into the dial. Okay. So the first thing we're looking at is the Aries point. Now I'm going to go through the asteroids that I have in the Aries point. But before I begin, I want to look at, and just point out some things. Look at this. Okay. So I'm going to be using this anyway. But look at this right there. The sun and the moon make Poseidon with Poseidon make a midpoint. There we have it again. Education, uh, propaganda, and what's the difference between the two? What's propaganda? right? And what's educational? What is educating us? What is enlightening us? So it's, it's really, it's really curious. I also like this because remember, it really is sort of a family group partisan thing, at least in the DC chart, but realize that it's going to be within your own families and your own organizations. And it doesn't matter if you don't live in the area of DC. So I really wanted to point that out to you. The other thing I want to point out is the fact that the nodes, here we are, fall right there. Okay, so here's our nodes. And they too are in this Aries point. And so when I spoke about our connections and, you know, um, emphasizing that we might want to uh, compress, delay, uh, lessen the amount of people we're dealing with. That's everybody all over the world. Okay. And I do know that certain parts of the world are still in shutdowns. And it's a shame here in the United States, we probably won't have a shutdown, though there are certain states that probably should. They won't. They don't have the right kind of government. Here we go with the politics thing again, to really understand how bad this really is. They're just more concerned about politics, which is politics. So that shows up right on this particular chart. But I also want to, um, I want to go a little deeper. Okay, so over here, we have a bully and we have body image, body language. Okay, so the bully concept is right there with the nodes. So be aware that you yourself could have contact with a bully you are listening to a bully, or you might be the bully. A lot to think about. There's a lot going on right now, but really what they're asking us to do down here is just do what we need to do. Just do it. And it's interesting because that comes in with, um, yes, Uranus. So, and Poseidon, not far away, but Uranus, because Uranus is like right there. And it's, it, it just do it, you know, and it, it is about freedom. And sometimes um, Uranus has people acting in a very unpredictable and sometimes rash way, particularly if we think about how loosely, even though Jupiter was in aspect to even the sun and the moon, it's such a wide orb, I didn't really talk about it, but it can make us more impulsive, rash, and here we go again, overdoing it. So the um, when we come over here, we see Juno is here, and Juno is actually running with, and I have it, we're going to be going through all of this, but Juno is running with a south node. I knew it was running with something, it's running with the nodes. <laughs> 
So these are partners. But could there be some oppression through a partner or maybe the partner's going through something and it's very difficult and there's restrictions as a result? Could it be that people are restricting themselves because of their partners? How does that play in? And is it fair? Because Juno is also asking us about scorekeeping and being fair with one another. Remember that these are both showing up in what would have been that third house where I pointed out that in that DC chart, that that is kind of a depressed thinking or oppressive thinking, okay? And Juno is how fair is this and scorekeeping and it's our partners. It's our one-on-one -on -one relationships, whether it be a significant other or a business partner, it's one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Now, I am going to just really quickly add a few more in here. Like um, one of the things that's come up is Odysseus and travel, travel is huge in what's going on. And I say that because I realized that some people are traveling worldwide and um, that's crazy right now. That's absolute insanity. Um, now, if you are vaccinated, maybe not so bad. I think England's only taking us if we're vaccinated, but it's still kind of crazy because one of the things that was initially predicted with this virus before it came, and astrologers knew it was coming, by the way, as did many psychics, was that it is something that is totally spread by jet setters. So think about that, okay? Um, the traveling is, I know people want to do it, and but if you travel, it's going to be like Japan. You're going to go somewhere and, and be like you're in prison because you really, we're in a pandemic. We're in a plague. That's how I want to look at it. Um, I can tell you, we looked at how there's a, an abundance of things going on right now. It really is. There's a, it just really is an abundance of things. An abundance of news is going to be hitting us. Bam, bam, bam. Um, this is the month where that stuff is going to start flying through the news. It was kind of confirmed in the DC chart. But I think all over the world. Then again. I think all over the world, they listen to what's going on in D.C. So a lot is going to happen. But with that said, I feel like we're either hearing something about actors or we're going to find out about actors or people that are fake. They're not, they're presenting materials, but they don't really believe what they're saying. They're just actors. So think about how actors can play into everything that's going on right now. Because that will be pretty big. And then I jump, yep, I jump all the way down to Messenger. Okay, so Messenger's up here at the Aries point. All right, I'm going to get a pen. Although this, like I say, this program is not as sensitive. But right here at the Aries point, so at the very top of that dial, you have messages. So news is hitting us. Okay. Some of the news is the reason why I think there's going to be clarity on people that have been disillusioned. So I think some of that is, is about that. Be careful because though Looney is outside of Looney, it has to do with sleeping and, and, you know, having, but, you know, it makes me wonder about uh, even, you know, people acting like lunatics, but it is out 50 minutes out, but it's out. Um, the next one that I come down to is, and I already spoke about this is Lee. Where are you getting your information? How, how dependent are we on the computer? That's another really good question. We then come up here and, you know, Mars is not in the Aries point, but it's really not far from it uh, as it's at six degrees, seven minutes of Virgo. You know, it's about 23 minutes outside of, which means that some aggressive actions. Now, remember, we did see bully over here. OK, and where this would be would be right in here. So I do believe that. Um, there could be some real aggressive actions in the next month. So we need to be very careful of that 
Be careful when you're out in public. People are angry and they're acting out. Actor, Mars, and um, Toro. So there's a lot of anger there. Um, and people acting out, which I, I kind of like the way it connects. It's still about the virus. Hygiea is in here. It's about our health and well-being. It's really interesting because people who don't want to get shots are really actually only thinking of themselves. They're not getting a shot because they don't want to affect their neighbors or their family members. They're not getting a shot because they don't want to get a shot. Okay? So let's get that straight because that's important. And it's also about, you know, taking care of ourselves. It's about, you know, kind of going off on your own. Particularly um, some people, because there could be physical ailments. Now, this doesn't always have to do with this virus. In some cases, people will choose to spend time alone because they're having some knee issues or some uh, shoulder issues or whatever it is. But there's also this idea that we understand more about our health and well-being and particularly our own physical bodies okay and that it might be uh just the awareness of our own physical health and you can put mars right in there and mars is also athlete so it could be the health of athletes then we um then we move on and i'm looking at when somebody is selfish and I know I just spoke about this, but I, it's really important because this is all part of the same dialogue. And again, it's going to affect everyone. But I really feel like people who are very selfish and very narcissistic will find that they will be humiliated in the next month. So people who are very self-centered, and this goes for not getting vaccinated. OK, I, I, I believe you might have a on your face, so be careful of that. It's also self-destructive, which can be humiliating. So, uh, again, that's just people who are not vaccinated and have been boo-hooing the whole thing, getting sick. And that is what that is. And so I did talk about uh, our body. The body's in it from several angles on this chart. OK, so we've got terpsichore. Um, and, and all of that is, is still over here. Okay. So there's terpsichore and terpsichore, which is your body. Okay. Is running with Toro. So it could be about muscle strength. It could be about your muscles, but it could also be that people w literally will have bad body language during this time watch for people who become violent okay um zeus which would be guns is uh, a little bit out but if you combine um that with a couple of other things by virtue of midpoint it can throw it into the mix so um i'm thinking the violence is more of a physical type but but you know zeus isn't far and that's guns so i just wanted to bring that up um, I did mention that Poseidon and Nike and all of that were down here. Um, so that's another thing we already spoke about. And the last one that I brought up was the Juno sun, which we already talked about. So the very last thing I'm going to mention with regards to this Aries point is hubris. And it is retrograde, but it is reminding us that much of what we're going through right now is very karmatic. And I believe that. I believe that with the virus. I believe that with the shutdowns. This is all karma. This is all about starting a new age. And we have to do it almost from scratch. That's the way it works the best. And I think that's what we're doing. So it's hubris. It is tested by the fates. It is fated, however you want to look at it. So let me take a moment. I'm going to gather another set of notes and we're going to look at the sun axis. Back. Now, one of the things I want to point out right away is that the sun is uh, six. Actually, let me get the exact. It's 14 minutes. So let me go 14 minutes just to prove this out. Okay. 
So here's our sun and moon point, and we have trans node Pluto is in there because once you start flipping that, we know that the nodes are in the Aries point. We already talked about them, but I did not really talk about Pluto because Pluto at 25 degrees is a few degrees away from the Aries point. But the difference is, is that when we move this to the sun's axis, it brings in Pluto, which tells us that not only are we bored and restricted and needing change through that Uranus and everything I talked about in the beginning, but that some of the transformations that we're going to be making will be our connections. So some of that is going to change in the next month. I also like this Aries Cupido because remember that I told you that for the DC chart is very political. And but this also points out, you know, that people are spending more time maybe in public with group members and family members. So that comes into play. Now, the way this is going to work is everything's going to be um, a degree off. OK, so um, what I'm going to do is then I would come all the way to one, two, I have to do this kind of three. So the actual 2346, which nothing comes up under, is the other part of the uh, axis here for the sun. Now, it looks like nothing's come up, but I got news for you. It really does play out here um, with a couple of other things. For example, um, Hakete, which is listening to our in, intuition, really just, uh, you know, um, dreams are pro really prophetic right now. And that, so you really do want to pay attention to that. Okay. And, um, so, and then here, um, the, it really brings up the, uh, there's a lot going on. So the Abundantia is really, really strong here. We're also doing a lot of pondering, wondering, you know, reflecting, if you will, because Malik's in there. And remember that that Venus Neptune can enlighten us to some of our own self-deception. So Malik is kind of reaffirming that we are, in essence, thinking about those things. Okay. Um and as I move down my list here, uh, we do have uh, some uh, things that we're at peace with, but other things we're really just not quite at peace with them. So there's, a, there's some struggles with some things that we're really not at peace with yet. Uh, we're coming to terms, but we're not quite there yet. So again, there's not a whole lot here. So I just want to kind of run through it quickly. Shiva, which is what's here, and I, I actually wanted to get to that earlier, but we'll talk about it right now. The whole idea of that is that, well, it makes us sensitive to noise. <laughs> okay, so there's one. But what it is, is withdrawing from something so you can rebuild. And you know, I just said that. I said that part of the reason why we're having this is because we're going into a new age and we have to completely start over and reconstruct. So we're in a withdrawal period so that we can reflect and wander, ponder, however you want to look at it, and then come back to reconstruct something new. So I, de I definitely think that's really important to point out here. Um, I think that it's interesting because if we're looking at the sun axis, then that whole surprise concept, that applies to everybody. So we're all going to be a little bit surprised and amazed. At, again, how some things just go so slowly. And I think that is rather surprising. And it does talk about uh, what's going slow is resolutions regarding an illness. And I think that's true for everybody. Okay. That I think that is true for everybody. And then that brings us to... Hmm. That just brings us, yeah, Pluto, which I've already discussed. We already knew that Pluto was in there and that should do it. So just a couple of ideas, things to play around with for the next month and, and really dig deep, you know, make sure you're getting your information from a good source and that you're not deluding yourself with regards to your relationships, your money or any else 
any other thing. But if you are, realize that this is a time to withdraw so that you can reconstruct. With that said, thank you for watching the video. Please be well. well. Take care. And until we meet again, as always, I wish you only happy reading.